The 11th of March, 1964, was a day of severe storms. A Dutch coaster was leaving Waterford Harbour in a forsate southeasterly gale, but she got no further than Dunmore East. This is how Irish television viewers saw it the next day. The 500-ton Dutch coaster Jan Brons is holed fore and aft, and the engine room is flooded. The captain and the first mate who remained aboard after the ship went aground yesterday were taken off early today by the Dunmore East lifeboat. She remained on those rocks for two months. On the 14th of May, TV cameras were at Dunmore East again. The Dutch coaster, aground on the Waterford coast, has been refloated by the Belfast tug, Kultar, and beached. Five weeks later, she was brought to Liffey Dockyard in Dublin. The Anne Bronze was towed into dry dock after one of the longest salvage operations on the southeast coast. At one time, she was declared a total loss. A British firm's tender for repair was accepted and she was towed to Glasson Dock, Lancaster. Gordon Jackson takes up the story. When the wreck was in Liffey Dockyard in Dublin, we decided that CO2 welding could be very suitably employed because of the economic advantages it obviously held. The damage to the after quarter was caused to some extent by the pounding of the vessel after she ran aground. The accommodation was completely flooded and internal damage also took place. The damage to the hold and after end of the engine room was extensive. The after head plates, stern tube and intermediate shaft were badly bent and the rudder had been completely carried away. I think one of the major difficulties at the early stages was just how much plating to cut out without altering or losing the stability of the ship. The shell expansion drawing as prepared by the consultant surveyors showed that no less than 75% of the plates had to be cut away and renewed. Large sections of the ship's plating on the sides were cut away as a first operation. In order to remove the double bottom of the ship, access had to be created by burning away sections of the tank tops. When large sections of the double bottom were cut out in approximately three ton units, they were allowed to fall onto the dock bottom and were removed en masse by cranes and laid on the dock side for future reference. But this, in fact, proved to be of little use as the plating was so badly damaged that new building had to be established. Modern prefabrication methods have been incorporated with older shipbuilding practice. Lines plans and offsets were unobtainable and the shipwrights had to raise templates in buttonwood. And from them, deep floorings and frames are cut and welded into position on the whole plates. In the prefabrication, the plates were in most cases tack welded by conventional methods. But over 85% of all welding was done by the CO2 process. We found a tremendous 
hidden advantage using CO2 welding in the absence of slag, which inevitably collects in construction of this sort. We did find exceptional cleanliness in this work, and operators themselves are very much happier to carry out this sort of welding using CO2. Sections of double bottom of approximately six tons were then lowered down the dock side and positioned under the ship to be lifted up and matched to existing plating. This plating had to be double side welded and large sections were turned over for cleaning out for second side welding. The degree of penetration with CO2 welding was found in every instance to be more than adequate. As we've seen, the after part of the ship was very extensively damaged and the stern frame, rudder post, and the propeller shaft boss all had to be completely cut away and renewed. Many of the parts fabricated in the workshops presented little problem to the established method of CO2 welding. But one had to consider the inclement weather and wind conditions which always affect CO2 welding in a dockyard. It was decided that by making use of polythene sheeting, good lighting conditions would still be available. Some means of securing polythene sheeting quickly to the ship's hull had to be established. The obvious choice are permanent magnets. The new owners renamed her after the managing director's eldest daughter. The original bronze marine diesel engine, which had survived prolonged immersion, was repaired. And now we're almost ready to refloat and refit her.